Hey guys, it's Ellen and Ira. Hey, a few weeks ago, we got a request from one of our viewers to feature some places around New York City that were associated with the Beatles. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to bring you around, mostly around Midtown, the place where they had their first official televised American appearance and somewhere where they performed in concert. And of course, outside the building where John Lennon was unfortunately assassinated. We hope you know, we'll be able to show you around a few places today and hopefully it's going to be good outside. So let's go. So right behind me is the Ed Sullivan Theater. Currently it's being used by The Late Show with Stephen Colbert as their studios. But back in February 1964, this is where the Beatles had their very first official American TV performance. Um, they appeared on the Ed Sullivan show, I, th I think at least twice. Um, and yeah, I think one of the shows that they appeared in when the episode was televised, it had, I think, around 73 million uh, viewers. Were you aware that there is a Six and a Half Avenue here in Manhattan? So Six and a Half Avenue is essentially a pedestrian walkway. It goes through buildings, open air areas, and it runs between Sixth and Seventh Avenue. As you can see, some of the areas are closed, but if you keep going down Six and a Half, some areas should be open. Not sure about how it is right now. Our next stop is Carnegie Hall. So in the same month, February 1964, the Beatles had a one night only appearance here. They did two concerts that were half an hour each, a few hours apart, and it was sold out and they never performed here again. One quick pit stop. This is 55 Central Park West. And if you're a fan of the Ghostbusters, this is the evil building. And that on top is where they fought the spirit. Quick tip, make sure to tip musicians and performers if you decide to film or take a picture of them. Otherwise, it's just rude. Next up is the Dakota. This is one of the oldest luxury apartment buildings in New York City. And right outside, there's the entryway. That's where John Lennon, unfortunately, was killed. Yoko Ono still owns the same apartment that her and John Lennon shared. Every year, to honor John and to say hi to the people celebrating his life on his birthday on October 9th, Yoko Ono lights a candle outside her window of her apartment in Dakota. One quick tip, never hire one of these tricycles because they charge $3 per minute. In Central Park, there's one area dedicated as a memorial to John Lennon. Strawberry Fields is named after the Beatles song, Strawberry Fields Forever, which was written by John and named after the former Strawberry Field children's home in Liverpool, England. Nearby, you can find the Imagine Mosaic, where musicians often perform Beatles songs for fans.
Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to get notifications whenever we post new videos. See you soon!